Hi guys, uh, it's Jill with Go English Coach. I'm a little running a little late today, um, so sorry about that. I had some um, crazy <laughs> camera issues. So, um, so welcome, welcome. Um, hi to everybody on Facebook Live, and if you're joining in the Zoom class, I'm so glad you're here. Um, for those of you who would like to join the Zoom class, it is the it is a way better experience. You know, go to the website goenglishcoach.com and join, and then you can join those live classes. Okay. Um, so, how is everybody today? I'm going to sip my coffee. I don't normally drink coffee, but today, you guys, it's I'm freezing, so I have to drink coffee to warm up. How is everybody? Hi guys. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad you're here. Okay. So let's get started. Um, for those of you on Facebook live, I'm going to have you, well, I'll stream live with you for about uh, five minutes and the rest of you, we will do our full one hour lesson. Um, so even though we started about 10 minutes late, don't worry. We will still, um, I will still do the full hour class for you. Um, for members, if you missed our class on Tuesday from uh, the 4th of May, if you missed either the grammar or the pronunciation class, don't worry. Those were uploaded to the website today. So just simply go, you know, to log into the website, goenglishcoach.com. And then as when you log in, you'll come to your member dashboard and then you'll click archived classes. Let me write that here for you guys. So archive, archived live classes. Okay. Shouldn't be, it's, it's super easy. We've designed a website that is just flawless. It's awesome. But if you do have problems, you know, please reach out. Um, but everything should be there for you, um, to, you know, just get caught up. Okay. Um, so today is, this is lesson two, okay, of our Intermediate Grammar One course. Intermediate Grammar One, lesson two. So what, here are the things we're going to do today. We're going to review. So we began last, uh, on Tuesday with um, an overview. So most of you have studied the simple present tense. Um, so we looked at simple present tense she drinks milk. Okay. There's just a simple present tense. She drinks milk. Let's take a look at this and I'll just show you guys a little bit about what we did on Tuesday. Okay. So we did a lesson on present tense in comparison with present progressive. Progressive. Okay. Remember this is when we, we use this tense to talk about things we do regularly or often, okay? So, example, she drinks milk, okay? A very simple tense. It's the, you know, you've got your subject, verb, object. That's the, that's the order of all English sentences, okay? Subject, verb, object. That's simple present tense. Now let's change this to our present progressive. If we say she is drinking milk, okay? What's the difference between these two sentences? What is the difference here? Okay, now this is the key that I really wanna point out to you guys. How do we know when to use this? present tense or, or present progressive tense. How can we know? So the difference between the meaning or the usage of these two um, tenses is this is something that is happening right now, okay? This is your key point, right now. So if I look at her, this girl or woman, and I see she's holding a glass of milk and she is drinking the milk right now, okay? In comparison here, this is something that she does maybe every day. She likes milk, so she drinks it 
Maybe she drinks it in the morning with breakfast. Maybe she likes it at night before bed, okay? She drinks milk. So this is something that happens often or regularly. Something that is quite normal to this person, to that subject, okay? So, some, so it's a little bit different. She drinks milk. She drives a truck. It's kind of like general information about this person, okay? She brushes her teeth in the mornings and at night. She brushes her teeth, okay? That's just general information about something that happens regularly, okay? In comparison to something that is happening in this moment. So if you look at a timeline and here is the present, okay? This is the future and the past. And we are right here, okay? This is something that is happening right now, maybe started five minutes ago, <laughs> continues right now and goes possibly into the future. If she really likes milk and she drinks it for a long time, okay? So it's, it's, it shows, this chart shows that it's happening now and might or may continue into the future, okay? Um, great. Um, let's see. So something that is happening right now. So we went through, you guys, we went through in our class on Tuesday how to form the negatives. So let's look at, at a negative here and then, an, um, and then a question, a question, okay? So to form this in the negative so she drinks milk is positive, right? How do we form the negative? She doesn't drink milk, okay? She doesn't drink milk. So a couple of things to know here, of course, doesn't is a contraction of two words, does and not, okay? And the pronunciation, I really, really, really want you guys to practice the pronunciation of this word. Um, I, you know, I've talked to you guys before about how important it is to, to practice pronunciation. And during a grammar class, it's a great time because you're learning these new skills and it's, it's like relevant and in context, okay? So doesn't, when I write these slants, you guys, you know that it's, doesn't, okay? Doesn't, doesn't. So if you're sticking around and you're gonna come to our, my pronunciation and fluency class, we're learning right now, we're learning this IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet, okay? So you'll get to learn all about what these symbols mean. But in general, if you're not able to come to that class, you should really practice a little bit of the IPA or a lot of the IPA, it really helps with learning English, um, listening and speaking, okay? So those are kind of just really important pieces. So she doesn't drink milk. She doesn't drink milk. That is your negative, okay? Let's make a question with this now, you guys. Let's form a question, okay? So we're gonna kind of move these around. Does she? drink, oops, drink, does she drink milk? Okay, so what we did is we, we, we put the does auxiliary in the first position of this sentence, does she? It's really crucial too. Um, so lots of people um, forget this part. And another thing I want to point out to you is notice what happens. So if you go from she drinks milk, now we've kind of put, so one step happened. We took the, the, um, the subject and we moved the subject from here, from the first position to here. We added this does or do auxiliary. Um, and then we took out Notice this part, you guys, there is no S, okay? So in that question form, does is the part that indicates it's the third person. So you don't need to conjugate or change the verb. So it goes back to this 
main verb form, okay? With no S. So does she drink milk? Does she? Now, another thing I wanna really make sure that you guys see or here actually, in fact, is that the pronunciation of this, what are you hearing are the sounds here. Duh, very easy, that one's duh, uh, uh, does. So we're gonna do this, uh, uh, does, and then a Z sound, okay? Um, does, does, okay? Not do's. Okay, and even though this pronunciation is do, right? We've got d, that's the pronunciation for that. Do, do you like to drink milk? Do you like milk? Okay, there's a question there. Do, notice how it changes when you put that ES, it changes to does, okay? So those are really important things. Lots of people like to say do's, or other something, you know, it makes sense, but it, it's not how we pronounce it. So really just knowing that um, and paying attention and practicing that pronunciation is important. Okay, so we're just doing our review. This is where we are right now, you guys. We are reviewing the lesson from Tuesday. Okay, does she drink milk? And then let's look at the answer. How do we answer this question? Okay, what kind of a question is it, first of all? First of all, this is a yes, no question, okay? Meaning you can simply answer yes or no, okay? If you want to include more information, so we can say yes, she does, okay? Or no, she doesn't, okay? Yes, she does. Or no, she doesn't. She doesn't drink milk, okay? All right, um, great. So that's our review. Now let's look at how we do that with this one here. On Facebook Live, you guys, I'm closing out for right now. Go ahead and go to goenglishcoach.com and join the gold level membership. And you can watch this whole video and 16 videos each month. Okay, you can join live. We talk on the, on the um, we interact like this. You're in the class live with me and it's awesome. So don't forget to go ahead and do that. You guys are the greatest. Um, great, okay. So for my members here, super excited you're here. Um, let's continue. So um, I'd like to look here. Let's look at the present progressive. I'm gonna just erase to get a little more space here. Um, let's just rewrite that a little smaller. She doesn't, just so you guys can write this down, drink milk, that's your negative. And then does she drink? I hope you guys can, okay. So I hope you can read when I write fast and in cursive. Um, okay, so Let's see. So she is drinking milk. Again, you guys remember this is in this moment right now, something that is happening right now. Okay. So let's look. This, this is the positive. Let's look at the negative. Okay. How do we make this sentence in the present progressive negative? How do we do this? Okay. She, this one isn't that bad. She isn't drinking milk okay or she is not drinking milk now if you wanted to say sh she isn't drinking milk she's she's drinking orange juice or she's drinking coffee or she prefers water okay so she isn't drinking milk um you can also say is not she is not drinking milk we might give a little more emphasis or feeling or emotion to it if we kind of separate those words she is not drinking milk Okay, she is not, and you can really stress that not part because normally in English, we don't stress the negative words, okay? Uh, actually, we do stress negative words. Sorry, that was a mistake. So we say she isn't, so we would stress that, okay? 
So it would not be strange to say she is not drinking milk. She is not drinking milk. Okay. Okay. Let's change this. So we've got, you know, here's, we've got like the, um, you've got the subject, the verb one, verb two, and then your object. Okay. So I like to just point those grammar kind of structural pieces out to you guys so that it kind of sinks in. It's kind of, you know, planting a seed for, um, so for future lessons, but always be noticing how English has this SVO organization to the majority of its sentences. Okay. Let's change this to a question. Okay. A question here. Is she, is she drinking milk? Okay. Is she? So what happened? We took this and we moved it out here. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I know. Is she drinking milk? So everything else kind of stays the same. Okay. And um, we just kind of change the order of the first or swap or switch out those two um, words, kind of exchange their places. Is she drinking milk? Okay. Is she drinking milk? Let's look at the answers. So again, it's a yes, no, a yes, no. So we're gonna have two different possible answers. Um, yes, she is. Okay, yes, she is. Now remember, I've said this before, but you can simply just answer yes, she is, or just yes. And then no, she isn't, okay? No, she isn't. Yes, she is, and no, she isn't, isn't. Now. We talked a little bit about the pronunciation of these contractions does, you know, with doesn't. Let's look at the pronunciation of this. So we want to make sure, and this one gets a little tricky too, because you've got this int, int sound at the end. Okay. So it sounds like this, I, a Z sound, I, another little I, an N and a T. Hopefully that makes sense there. Isn't, isn't. So it does really make sense for you guys to practice that a little bit, okay? Practicing that sound. And so that when you get into the situation where you're using this tense, it's really easy to just have people understand exactly what you're saying, okay? Um, okay, so now you guys, we've done the review. We've looked at um, you know, the present tense, we've looked at present progressive, and I hope that all of this actually makes a lot of really good sense to you. What I'd like to do right now is show you a couple of paragraphs, and I'd like to read them together, and I think this will be really helpful, okay? And then we'll go back and do a little bit of practice. So, let's see... So you guys, again, here's the book that I love using. This is this focus on grammar. So you guys are seeing, you know, my whole desk here. So this is the book, okay? And then um, what I wanted to show you um, in this book is this part right here, okay? So what we've got here and, okay. So it says, discover the grammar, discover the grammar. Um, now, read the postings by Brian, a Canadian studying in Argentina, underline all of the verbs that describe what is happening now. Okay, what is happening now? So what are we looking for as we do this, you guys? This one, we're looking for this present progressive, right? We're gonna look for this is with the ing form of that verb. So let's take a look. So, okay, here it says June 30th, 30th. So, um, you know, that is one of those words when we say it, 30th, 30th, okay? Let me write it out for you guys here, 30th. So this is how we pronounce this. And sometimes I know, Thirtieth. So sometimes those th sounds can be really, really tricky. But practice it. You always have to practice it. Okay, thirtieth, June thirtieth. Um, 
Okay, great. So 7.30 p.m. My parents, here's an example for us, are still working, are still working. Now notice what happened here, you guys. What happened is we inserted, we infixed in between is and working. We put the word still. Um, my, my host parents are still working. Isn't that crazy? So you're separating the two verbs that normally go together and you're putting in one of these words that kind of um, explains a little bit of information. And what does that mean? My host parents are still working, you guys. What does that mean? It means they started working before and they are still working now, okay? Um, so it's kind of referencing the past and continuing it into the future. They're still working. They are still, they were working five minutes ago. They were working 10 minutes ago, but they are still working in this minute. Okay. Okay. My host parents are still working. Carlos, my quote, father works at home, works at home. So I hope that you can see the two, um, the two differences with the, these tenses. So he works at home. He works at home every day regularly. So you can kind of see the difference there. It's something he just does. He works, he works from home. It's kind of a general term with general information about this guy's life. Um, in contrast with they are still working, that means in this moment, okay? I think most of you, if, you, you know, if you're coming from Spanish and you're coming some, from some of these, um, I'm not sure if Arabic has it. I'm familiar with Spanish, that's, that's my second language. So sorry if I only reference Spanish, but you understand, I'm sure. Um, but just, you know, a lot, of, a lot of languages have a very similar style, meaning you have a present tense and something. However, I will say that I think with Spanish, the usage is a little bit different, okay? So paying attention to some of these things, even though you might have studied this before, I think is really important, okay? Okay, let's keep going. So I hope you can see the differences here. So now what we're gonna do, you guys, we're gonna underline, so we're gonna circle the verbs that describe what regularly happens, and we're going to underline all the verbs that are happening right now. Okay, so here's our next sample. My little brother, Ricardo, is cute. Here you go. So he is cute. We're gonna circle that verb because it's, something that regularly happens, or it's in general information about this boy, um, what's his name, Carlo, Ricardo, okay? General information, Ricardo is cute. It's not something that's changing. You could say in this moment, he is being cute, um, and that's not something that's permanent, um, but he is cute is more permanent. Let me write that word down here, okay? Something permanent or more, less changing, permanent. Hope you guys can see the difference with that. Okay, let's continue. And, you know, let's just, you know, if you want, you can just take a screenshot of this and then practice it. So that's always an option. Um, he looks and acts a lot like Bobby. He looks and acts a lot like Bobby. Now, look, we got kind of two here. We've got two of these verbs that are a little bit more permanent. Okay, it's not something happening right now. It's something permanent or not changing, okay? Um, right now, ooh, that's a really good indication. When you have the words at the beginning of the sentence that say right now, we should be thinking here. This is, I'm going to see um, a, a, a present progressive tense happen here. Right now, he's looking. There it is, you guys. So we're gonna underline that. He's looking over my shoulder and trying. There's another one. He's looking over my shoulder and trying to read my journal. Okay. He's looking. He's looking. Okay. Again, with that pronunciation, he's looking and trying. So you can, this is interesting because you can combine like this so that he is Okay, he is looking and he is trying. You're using this one is to support this and this. 
So you can do that. It's totally, totally normal and totally possible. You could say, because if you said he is looking and is trying, it's just redundant, meaning you're saying kind of two things. You're saying that word is twice and you don't need to. Okay. So he's looking and trying. He's looking and trying. And the pronunciation of he's, you guys, he's, it's got an, a Z sound at the end. And this is that long E, he's. If you say it with a short sound, it's going to it's going to sound like is his. So you want to say he's, he's looking and trying. Okay. Let's go back to here. He's looking and trying to read my journal. Okay, great. Um, okay. So then what happens on July 4th? What happens on July 4th? Now we've got another one of these fourth. Okay, there's that TH sound at the end of that again. I know, fourth, fourth. You gotta just practice those, okay? Um, great. The weather is cold here in, in the summer. I usually, so this is a nice indicator for you to know what kind of verb to expect after the word usually. Usually is gonna give you something that happens regularly or usually, that's a great word to help you to know what kind of tense they're looking at. Regularly or um, usually, okay? These are great indicators for this. Helps you to know what's coming. Okay, the weather here is, so we're gonna circle that. Even though it's talking about today or something in this moment, okay? The weather here is cold in the summer. I usually spend the first weekend of July at the beach. However, now this is very nice. I love this sentence. So today, that's gonna tell me something too. That's gonna tell me we're gonna use this present progressive because it's today in this moment. Today, I'm walking around in a heavy sweater. So that's something that started we look at the timeline of today I'm walking around, um, I'm walking around in a heavy sweater. Let's talk about that, okay? Why, why is that in the present tense? It's something that is happening right now, started in the past and possibly continues into the future, okay? I'm walking around Okay, so I'm, the pronunciation of that, you guys, is I'm, practice that. So it's, this is something, he got up maybe at 8 a.m. this morning, he put on that sweater, and right now, he's still walking around wearing the sweater, okay? He's walking around wearing the sweater. Okay, great. Okay, so I usually spend, this is just simple present, the first weekend of July at the beach. Today, we're gonna underline this, right? I'm walking around in a heavy sweater, okay? All right, what happens here on July 10th? 10th, okay, we're gonna practice that word too. July 10th, these are all really good number words. July 10th. Okay, July 10th, what happens? So I'm sitting in the school cafeteria with some of my classmates. I'm sitting in the school cafeteria with some of my classmates. Okay, is it a present tense sentence or is it a simple present, or excuse me, is it a simple present tense or a present progressive? Is, it, is he talking about something that happens usually or regularly? Or is he talking about something that's happening right now? Okay, great. He's talking about something now. Okay, I'm sitting in the school cafeteria with some of my classmates. In Canada, I only drink tea, but at the moment I'm having a cup of strong coffee. Okay, great. So you can also see what happens here. 
I'm sitting in the school cafeteria. This means like what right now, okay? In, in Canada, I only drink. So we're gonna circle that. Think about, this is a great example. I only drink tea when I'm in Canada, okay? However, so he's making a contrast. I only drink tea, but at the moment, at the moment, so that's really helpful too. This shows us that we're going to be using this present progressive. I'm having a cup of strong coffee. It tastes great, okay? Um, let's continue. The students here come from all over the world. So what kind of a tense? Is this present tense or present progressive? Remember, every sentence has a verb if it's a complete English sentence. So do we have present tense or present progressive? Present tense or present progressive? So the students here come. So that's present tense. Let's circle that, right? Circle the verbs that would regularly happen. The students here come from all over the world. Most of them don't speak English. Okay, so what, what do we have in this? We have this long sentence here. We have a long sentence and it has two different tenses, which is totally okay. Um, so sometimes people think in one sentence, um, you, you need to have all of the same um, tense. Um, in English, if you are separating with a comma, you're actually taking two sentences and creating one sentence. You're kind of um, combining those, uh, uh, those sentences or thoughts, okay? And it's totally fine. So I you a little bit, no here, most of them don't speak. So what is this? We're gonna circle that, okay? Because it's something that regularly happens. Most of them don't speak English. So we're all speaking Spanish. We're all speaking Spanish. So what it, we're all speaking. Wow, that is great. What's happening here? So we're, we, are all speaking Spanish. So again, we have put a word in between those two, the helping verb and the main verb. Okay, and that's totally fine. You can totally do this. And this is a great example. We're all speaking Spanish. We're all speaking Spanish. Um, they are all speaking Spanish. She's still speaking Spanish. So you can add that extra bit of information just before the main verb, okay? Awesome, great. It's a great way to learn. That's an exclamation point. So it shows excitement, right? We know this. Um, okay, what happens here on August 6th? Sixth, now this one is kind of tricky to say, sixth, I think, because you've got the X, T, and H sound, okay? Sixth, sixth. Um, you know, in the pronunciation class, we study a lot of numbers and number pronunciation. So, um, so be sure to come to that class to you guys, or, you know, go back. I have a number on the site for gold members um, and actually all members. I have some short videos about number pronunciation and those can be really, really helpful. Okay, August 6th, I usually feel great in the evening, but tonight I feel really tired, okay? So we've got two, feel and feel, okay? I usually, it tells us it's present tense, okay? Present tense, so we're gonna circle that. This is what is helping me to know that it's present tense. But tonight, I feel really tired, okay? This is all correct. Now, I wanted to show you guys what's going on here. Even though this guy says, um, tonight, which indicates we should probably use this present progressive. Why not? Why are we saying, I I'm feeling, I'm not feeling great. I'm not feeling good. So what we call these verbs, and this is just kind of, a, it's more of a unique or it kind of, it breaks, it, it's a situation where it kind of breaks the rules. Okay, and one of the rules here, let me show you guys, actually they have a nice explanation in this book for you. Um, here, these are called, let's take a look at this. You see that? Hopefully you can see that well. This camera thing is pretty awesome. Maybe that made it more difficult. Okay, 
But you can see here, I'm gonna try to smush this book down a little bit. You can see here what's going on. So let's read this. Use non-action verbs to describe states or situations. So we're saying state, we're not talking about like the United States or you know, a state in Mexico or something like that. It's not land. It's a, it's a, um, it's a, a, a state of being. So something like I think or I feel. It's not an action verb, right? An action verb would be something like you take action. I eat. I drink. I drive. Those are actions. Okay. These kinds of um, non-action verbs. Our, look at some of the examples here, like, love, hate, want, feel, fear, and trust. Okay, so those are emotions. Now, what happens is, is you can use them in using the ing, I am hating this, but really it's not different. There's no difference in meaning, okay, because it's a state, it's an emotion, there's no difference in meaning if you say, I hate milk versus I am hating milk. The meaning of those two sentences are the same, okay? So that is why they call them these stative verbs, okay? So they, they, um, they describe a state of your being, think, like, love, okay? So... As I said, you can use them in the present progressive, but it doesn't change the tense. So kind of like, who cares why do it, okay? So that's what's happening back over here, you guys in this here where he says, but tonight I feel, even though it's something that's happening right now, he is using the word feel with just the simple present tense, okay? Let's go back to this grammar explanation over here. Okay, so here are some examples where we use this emotion. Another, um, another um, category of these non-action verbs have this mental states. So a state or a condition of being, okay? A mental state, something in your brain or your emotions, okay? To know, to remember, to believe, to think, to mean. Okay, look at this example here. What do you mean? We don't say, what are you meaning? That, that just, it doesn't make any sense, okay? Um, understand and wonder. We do pretty often say, I'm wondering. I'm wondering. Write that down, you guys, because I really think this is a great, um, it's a good, uh, What's the word I want to say? It's a good like phrase. I wonder, it's something I'm kind of thinking about, but I don't quite have an answer for it yet. So you can say, I wonder if it will, let's see, this is in the future tense, rain tomorrow. I wonder, it's a little like, I'm thinking about it. I'm not really sure. I don't have a, an answer, okay? Now, if we make, so this is present tense, okay? Just, it's not ing, but let's make it ing. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if it'll rain tomorrow, okay? Either one is fine, I'm wondering. But what I want you to notice is the difference, it doesn't change the meaning. Okay, and that's what happens with these verbs. So sometimes we can use them with the in the present progressive. So let's put here, present progressive, I'm wondering. But what I want you to notice is that it doesn't, the meaning of this sentence and the meaning of this are the same. Okay, the meanings are the same. Versus if I say I run, um, I run or I'm running. These two, if I say I run or I'm running, they have different meanings. This is something I do. I run um, every day. Okay. So it's like I'm, I'm a person who exercises and I run. 
Okay, that's general information about me. If I say I'm running, it's right now. Okay, different meanings of those two sentences. But with these non, what did we call them? Non active, is that what they call them there? Non action, there we go. Non action verbs, the meaning of these two sentences do not change. The meaning in both sentences is the same. Okay, so adding the ing here doesn't change the meaning. Okay, so I wonder means the same thing as I'm wondering. If you say, I love pizza, it doesn't change if you say, I am loving pizza, okay? So there's a little bit difference. You will hear um, sometimes the present progressive, you will hear that because um, English speakers do use it. Um, and in general, it's a little bit more like casual, okay? I am loving this, it's kind of like, like the speaker is saying it and kind of knows you're not really supposed to say it, <laughs> but it's kind of funny and um, it's kind of current language, you know, more colloquial. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at some of these other ones. So possession. So I have, you own to possess and belong. Okay. So I, let's see, Caesar has two brothers. That's not something that changes. Um, some students own cars. So we would never really say some students are owning cars. We don't really say that, okay? And then the last category here is senses or perception. So your senses are like, I hear, I see, I smell, I taste, I feel, okay? So hear, see, smell, taste, feel. To notice is also something associated with seeing something. So to notice, to seem, it seems like the party is ending. It seems like the party is ending, okay? Look, he looks tired. He looks happy. You, will, you really wouldn't say he is looking tired. Um, you can say it, remember it's okay. But remember that the meaning doesn't change between he looks tired or he is looking tired, okay? B, appear and sound, okay? Um, the car sounds loud and the car is sounding loud. The meaning of those two sentences is the same. Okay, the car sounds loud and the car is sounding loud are, are very similar in meaning, okay? Now, here's another one that I wanna point out to you. This is kind of like, it says, be careful. So use simple pre present tense with most non-action verbs. Do not use the present progressive, even when the verb describes a situation that exists at the moment of speaking, okay? So, so we're gonna say, Jane wants to go home now, Jane wants to go home now. We're not going to say Jane is wanting to go home. Okay. We don't really say that. She's wanting to go home. Now, this is what I was just sharing with you guys about this um, casual or informal conversation. So I like to point these things out because I think it's really, really helpful. Okay. In informal conversation, informal conversation. So informal means right with friends or um, people that you are comfortable with. Okay. So in informal conversations, some people use present progressive with the verbs of emotion, especially like, or love. So that's what I was saying earlier. I am loving this new car. I am loving this. Okay. So look at this. Oh, there's an example. Gosh, this is great. Okay. So I'm loving the book. I'm loving it. But what I want to say is, again, I'm loving the book is the same meaning as I love the book, okay? So the meaning doesn't change. But as I said, in these kind of casual, maybe younger groups, you can say, I'm loving this, okay? I'm loving this book. She's liking him more and more. She's liking him more and more. Okay. Um, this often describes a temporary feeling or a change of feelings, okay? He's understanding a lot better these days. He's understanding 
a lot better these days. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I really like to show these grammar presentations. Um, and I hope that you guys take some time to, you know, write things down, ask questions, write down your questions. Like, man, I don't understand this. When, why do we use this during that? Write all of those questions down. And then in our next class, you guys, you can get more information. So I usually like to, you know, start each class with questions. Okay. And this is a great time to interact with me um, and, you know, get some answers to your questions. So things stop being confusing. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's take another, a deeper look into some of these non-action and action verbs. So it says some verbs can have both a non-action and an action um, meaning. Okay. So here are some sense and perception verbs. Okay. Taste, smell, feel, and look. Taste, smell, feel, and look. All right. The non-action version would be the soup tastes good. The soup tastes good. Okay. So that's conveying that the soup, it's good. The soup is good. Okay. He's tasting the soup. Now it's using the same verb, but in a different way. Okay. So this is more of an action. He's tasting. It's something he is doing. Okay. So that is an action verb. So you can see there's not there's not always, it's not always clear what verb is action and what verb is non-action. In this case, you can use them in two separate ways. One in the first sentence is a perception or a sense. It tastes good. And here it's an action verb. He is tasting this, okay? It's a really, really cool distinction. Um, so hopefully that makes sense and doesn't make you feel, you know, confused or overwhelmed. Um, okay, great. So he, his car looks great. His car looks great. This is clearly a non-action verb. The car appears or it, you know, it's, it's something about the car that makes it a non-action verb. Okay. Um, versus I'm looking in this moment, I'm looking at his car. So that is an action. It's an action verb. I'm looking at his car, means I'm examining it. I'm looking at it closely versus his car looks good. Like it's beautiful. Okay. Okay. This last part here. So to have and think I have a new watch. I have a new watch. So that's back up to that possession thing. I own a new watch is the meaning here. I'm having fun. I'm having fun means an experience I'm doing right now, whatever I'm doing is I'm having fun. So that is an action verb in that scenario, in that sentence, you guys. Okay. Okay. I think he's right. I think he's right. That's an opinion. Okay. I think he's right. That's your opinion. It's so it's a non-action verb. There's no action there here. Let's use it as an action verb. I'm thinking of going. I'm thinking of going. So it's happening something right now. I'm considering going to the museum with them. I'm considering it. I'm, should I go? Should I not? Okay, that's what's happening. And then finally, this usage note, it says we often use feel in the progressive form when it expresses an emotion. The meaning is the same as when we use the simple present. And this is what I have been saying to you. Okay. I love ice cream. I'm loving ice cream. Those two sentences have the same meaning. There's no difference. Okay. And look at these two sentences right here. I feel very happy about this. I feel very happy about this, or I'm feeling very happy about this. They have the same meaning. Okay. So it's not like this is incorrect. It's just that the meaning doesn't change. Okay. All right. Awesome. Let's finish up this last section. Then we're going to wrap up and close out for today. Here's this last part here, August 25th, 25th. So again, we'll be practicing those. Okay. I'm feeling very comfortable here now, but it's almost time to go home. I'm feeling very comfortable here now. So this kind of goes in the face of what we just talked about. 
he's saying, I'm feeling very comfortable. So this is in that present progressive, kind of this same example as we did right over here. Now, the, and he's using it, which is great. But what I want you to notice again is I'm feeling very comfortable here now. And I feel very comfortable here now have the same meaning. Okay, you guys got it. You're so smart. <laughs> okay, but it's almost time to go home. So there's a present tense. It's almost. It is. So is is your verb. It's, you know, just a simple present tense is. My host parents usually cook a light dinner, but tonight is a special event. Those are all just the regular what happens. They're preparing. They're preparing. There's that ing and the are preparing. They're preparing a big party for me to say goodbye. I miss them already. So something that's happening in the present tense. I miss them already. I miss them already. So you could say I'm missing them already, but the meaning would be the same as I miss them already. Okay, the same meaning. Um, okay. So what I'd like to do, I'm going to, um, what I would like for you to do, please, is take a picture. Please take a picture of this right here. And I want you to practice those sentences. If you were in my live class, I would just email this to you, okay? So it's very easy. Um, so take a picture of it and then do what it says here. So some students are talking outside of a classroom, circle the correct words to complete their conversation. So we've got Taro and Marissa who are um, having a conversation. Okay, so here's the example. There's Miguel. He talks or he's talking to Luisa. He talks. They have circled here the correct one, which is he's talking to Luisa. Okay. Okay. Pause this video right now and complete these sentences on your own. Okay. Go ahead and pause. When you come back, I'm going to give you the correct answers. Okay. Okay, guys, let's take a look at your answers here. So we've got the example. There's Miguel. He talks or he's talking. They have done that one for you. He's talking to Luisa is done. So he's talking. That indicates something happening right now. Marissa says, yes, they take or they're taking a class together this semester. So we're going to circle this. They're taking a class together this semester. I hope that you circled that correctly. All right, Taro responds, they stand or they're standing very close to each other. Do you think, are you thinking that they date, they're dating? Okay, so we have three in here. What did you guys have? They're standing. They're standing very close to each other, okay? Do you think that they are dating? Do you think, these are great questions. Do you think they're dating? So those are things, do you think in the present tense, and that they are dating is the present progressive. Okay, great. And then Marissa responds and says, no, I don't think it means anything special. I don't think it means anything special. I don't think it means anything special. I come from Costa Rica and people usually stand that close. So you can tell in that sentence, I come from Costa Rica. That's not something happening right now in this moment. It's more um, general overall information about her as a person. I come from Costa Rica and people usually, present tense, simple present, stand that close to each other there. People usually stand that close to each other there. Okay. Awesome. Great job, you guys. So, okay. I'm going to close this lesson for today. It, you know, always feel free to go back and rewatch lessons. Um, I'm so happy that you guys are doing well and attending these classes. Um, I know that it can be super helpful. So um, please reach out if you have questions, jill at goenglishcoach.com or um, on WhatsApp, it's 
600-9842. If you can't find me there, you know, always just send an email or you can visit on the contact us page on the website, goenglishcoach.com. All right. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you soon.